Next up, we're going to look at the 4300 series, which combines of pearls, metallics, and iridescence. I've got a panel here, 50-50 mix of base coat sealer dark and base coat sealer grey. Don't be looking for the part number for base coat sealer grey, it doesn't actually exist. What I've done is, I've simply mixed some base coat sealer dark and base coat sealer white to give me a grey ground coat. And what I'm doing now is I'm spraying pearl black, using my black as a base coat, with two or three light coats. By doing it this way, I can get coverage and reach my sealing coat much faster. Now I'm coming in with pearl silver, and I'm shooting the pearl silver over my base coat sealer grey mix. This is the quickest way to get coverage with the pearls and the metallics. Now I've got a 50-50 mix and I'm using metallic blue. I tend to shoot most of my metallics and pearls over black. I do this for three reasons. Ease of use, less paint and maximum brightness. You see in my first coat the white part of the panel looks a little bit mottled, a little bit pastely, whereas the black looks absolutely fine. I'm coming up with my second coat. I'm going to reach a ceiling coat in three coats, which is complete coverage. My point is, it's considerably easier to spray this stuff over base coat sealer dark. You see the second coat? Both sides are starting to neutralize already. But the black panel always looks better. It looks brighter. It looks more even. Now I'm coming in with my third coat. And you can see the opacity of the metallic blue. However, when I take this out in the sunlight, when it's been cleared and it's in the sunlight, my point is that it's going to take me a lot less time, a lot less paint to put it over the darker color than it is over the white. The next color I'm using is iridescent purple. And I'm going to put three coats on, again over black, for maximum brightness and ease of use. The fundamental difference between a water-based paint and a solvent-based paint is that a solvent-based paint is a chemical bond, whereas a water-based paint is a mechanical bond. What that means is, I can now leave this panel indefinitely before I put the second coat on. I don't have to abide by time windows like I do when I'm using a solvent base paint. I can apply immediately or I can leave it for a couple of days and then reapply without having to actually sand. That's the difference between a mechanical and a chemical bond. I'm coming in now with my second coat and amazingly the paint is only 30-40 seconds old and I'm still getting my second coat in. As soon as that paint dries, I can come in with another coat. With a solvent based paint, I have to give it a flash off time. The flash off time is a time it takes a paint to chemically dry before it can be recoated by itself. But if my paint does not contain chemicals, I do not have to abide by these rules. So after just one minute, I've got two coats on. You can see it's completely flashed off, the binder has evaporated. And I'm ready now to come in with my third coat. If this were solvent based paint, I'd have to leave it for at least 4 or 5 minutes before I could reapply. A lot of people don't use water based paint because it's too slow. This fascinates me. When you're using small quarter work like this in small areas, it's insanely fast. I've now reached complete sealing coat in less than 1.5 minutes. I'm now ready to mask, scalpel, cut or clear coat, whatever I see fit. Just to prove my point how strong that mechanical bond is, straight over the top. Absolutely no chance of a product failure here as long as I cure between coats. What I'm doing now is I'm coming over with iridescent fuchsia. Complete opposite now. I'm putting on a very, very wet coat. The opposite of what I've been showing you. But this is a technique I'm going to show called negative marbleizing. So this is iridescent fuchsia over the top of iridescent purple. Now I'm just taking a bit of plastic, some plastic bag. You could use cling film, anything at all and I'm starting to dab the paint while it is still wet. Marbleizing is simply wet paint manipulation. However, if you notice, I'm not actually having any effect on the iridescent purple. If you look at my gloves, you notice they're only purple. There's no blue. I've got no cross contaminants whatsoever. Again, that's because it's a mechanical bond. If I were doing this with solvent based paint, the two colors would be chemically merging. I would be getting a muddy blue purple. However, this way with the mechanical bond, I'm only removing the purple paint, sorry the fuchsia paint because the purple has already previously been dried. You see the two paints are chemically separated. I'm going to come back to this panel a little bit later, but in the meantime I'm spraying out a pan in metallic white coarse. 
This is just base coat Sailor White, and I'm putting two very, very light coats of metallic white coarse over the top. Again, in with a heat gun, and I'm now going to lay down some AutoWare masking film. Honestly, this paint's like literally three, four, five minutes old. This is the AutoWare masking film, and I'm just removing any bubbles. And I'm now drawing out my design. In this case, it's just a flame design. I'm just using ship's curves or French curves. This is a technique that I teach in my two-day custom painting class. Plug, plug. Obviously very easy. Even a first-time student can do beautiful, beautiful flames. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this directly out with my X-Acto knife. Coming right on the edge of my pen line. And just removing the positive stencil. 